Dude, come look at this. What is that? It's the future. The new army optic? It, yeah, it is, but should it be? I don't know. Let's talk about this. How's it going everybody? Clint here. Alec here. We're with Classic Firearms. And before we even start this video, yes, this is the same scar that we featured in a recent giveaway, but we gave away a new scar with new equipment because I've used the crap out of this one. So just wanted to go ahead and silence all y'all on that. Anyway, what today's video is actually about, because y'all seem to like when we talk about the next generation, the next generation squad stuff. stuff. Anyway, what today's video is about is the next generation squad weapon fire control system. And when I first heard that, I'm like, a new trigger? Yeah. That's not at all what this is. It's actually a optic coming from L3 Harris and Vortex are putting together separate optics, but to the Army's demands. Mm -hmm. And apparently Leupold's working on something, but we don't know what it is. Well, so from my understanding is that L3 Harris is utilizing Leupold's. Oh, okay. Because um, Leupold has an expansive like manufacturing yes. system and process, so essentially they're using like the the programs that they already have implemented to right. manufacture it. I think. Okay. Gotcha. So, from what little information we could find out there, we just kind of wanted to come together and talk about this mm -hmm. because there's a lot happening. Yes. Right. And it seems like we're it's it's happening very fast and all mm -hmm. at once. So for instance, if you guys don't know, SIG has come out with a next generation squad weapon system and it's crazy. We actually have a video all about that. Alec is a huge fan. No, and <laughs> that was sarcasm. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's it's a lot that's cool and I, I appreciate the innovation. Yeah, right? I do like innovation. I, especially in the firearms industry, mm -hmm. but this is all Military, I don't know what we're gonna see as far as a on the civilian side yeah. of things. But see what here's but. what tends to happen though, and this is what I like, is there's innovation to meet specific like military criteria, yep. and then that always trickles over into the civilian market. Right. So I think you know the army kind of saying, Hey, not only do we want a new weapon platform, we also yeah. want a new cartridge, and yep. then we also want a new optic also. Yeah. So you're talking about a completely different system altogether. Oh, yeah. 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 So and that innovation usually tends to kind of work its way down. Yeah. So it should be pretty cool. So so of course, throughout this video, we're going to want to hear you guys' comments down below, your thoughts and opinions. And if you haven't already, go ahead and give it a like because, uh, well, we appreciate it. And also, too, YouTube hates guns and talking about them. And the more you like this video, the more you just rub it in their face. So <laughs> keep it up. Anyway, with all that being said, we've got a couple of rifles out here that are kind of showing the evolution of technology within the firearms platform. Old school M16 clone with your basic iron sights, what I went to boot camp with. You were one of the first graduating uh, classes that actually graduate with the ACOG, right? Yeah. So ACOG, representation at least. This is actually a three and a half power 308 designated ACOG. Uh, super reliable optic. And we're starting to see these phased out mm -hmm. and becoming more popular on something like this, which is a low power, low power, low power variable Words optic. Hard. Words are hard. LPVO, a one to six, at least on this guy here. It looks like uh, SIG has actually got some pretty neat things mm -hmm. about that with like the Tango. But uh, now we're looking at this next site and it looks like it's doing everything yeah plus some yeah so you've got a little bit of information about it i do so i'm going to reference my uh, my cheat cards here go for it so and i highlighted some stuff at least what we could find so l3 harris has stated a variable the ideal system will consist of a variable magnification ballistic calculator atmospheric sensor suite and laser rangefinder also all of this will apparently or at least has the capability to run to a integrated heads up display onto a helmet. So, hashtag Space Force. Yeah, right. Um, combining these features with an in scope digital display produces and adjusts aim point for the soldier within the field of view. So, basically, what this thing does is, at least from my understanding, now there are some scopes kind of mm -hmm. out there already like this right now that have a very high power, essentially like laser designator on it. Yeah. So, you shoot that laser at whatever unknown distance target you're at, and then it takes into all these effects, right? So, like the spin of the earth, wind yeah. drift, temperature, whatever your specific load is you're using. And then it runs this through a ballistic calculator that's integrated onto the scope and then it adjusts 
um, your reticle from yep. where you're aiming at. So it basically turns it from point of aim to point of impact. So yep. it shifts that reticle up and then there's some other cool stuff that's out there. But you have all this running possibly yep. through a heads up display. So you're getting real time data and we're talking about calculating this like it's not like you know, going to sniper school and doing all the calculations. Right, and you're like, pretty much, yeah, you're it's like the, instantaneous. Yeah, you're yeah. eliminating the human element, so you can pretty much, what I, what's what's cool about this, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and talk about the pros about this. So we've already talked about the innovation side of it, the tech, mm -hmm. technological advancement, which is super cool. Uh, the other thing too is, again, the, the quickness behind yeah. it, right? So you're pretty much giving the capabilities of a sniper, a, the designated yeah. marksman role, uh, to your standard infantryman, mm -hmm. right? So he's gonna be able to do, and with the weapons that are now being developed by SIG, it looks like your one infantryman can be a DMR, mm -hmm. could be a machine gunner if need be, yeah. uh, and also too, if he needs to go for distance or kick in a door, he's gonna be mm -hmm. able to do that with all one system, one optic, all set, ready yeah. to go, which seems very cool. And mm -hmm. again, you're taking the human element out of it, so if you are having to engage targets at a great distance, your, your calculator, your computer is mm -hmm. doing all that for you, you don't have a spotter that you're relying on yeah. so much. So all of it seems very neat, but of course, well, especially comma, us, but but right. So of course, being Marines, we hate change. We love our tradition. Yes. We love you know things like that. So whenever I heard that they were implementing ACOGs at uh, you know boot camp, mm -hmm. my first thought was, well, these idiots aren't going to know how to shoot with iron sights. I didn't, and and yeah. to you know do your point. So I had only pretty much ever shot with iron sights, right? right? Like I think the only time I used a scope was like a three to nine power Simmons, like my dad bought me yeah. at Walmart, like yeah. growing up. But other than that, I'd always shot with irons, right? So yep. the first time that I shot with the ACOG, it's the only time I've not shot expert, which if you've ever shot table one, it's not that hard. Yeah. So Expert um, just means you know how to shoot. Yeah, pretty If you've much. got sharpshooter or marksman, I'm sorry, <clears throat> fellow Marines out there, yeah. do better. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But anyway, so like I did not shoot that well with it. One, because it was a new platform, but also two, I don't think like the PMIs that were there at the time like really had a good understanding of the yeah. system. Like I'm sure it was pretty much like, okay, hey, we got to get these guys through. For because... those of you that don't know, a PMI at Marine Corps Boot Camp, all he is is a coach to pretty much teach you how to shoot if you've never shot yeah, before. Yeah, primary marksmanship instructor. All he wants you to do is say, hey, take everything you learned at home, throw that out the window, here's how the Marine Corps wants you to shoot. Mm -hmm. And that's what you get taught at boot camp. Yeah. Because every Marine's a rifleman. Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, again, so it was kind of changing to a new platform. Um, so, it, and I think that, you know, as per, per time has progressed yeah. on, like you said, I think we're kind of forgetting how to shoot with iron sights. Like I yeah. know a lot of my younger Marines that are in my platoon have never shot with iron sights their entire life. Really? So like, if you have an optic fail, mm. what are you gonna do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pray. Send it. <laughs> Send it, yeah, yeah, just keep going, you know, just, let, just hold down on the trigger. Um, so all of this kind of makes me think, and this is exactly the point I was making, with all this added technology that mm -hmm. we're starting to see, because again, the ballistic computer on the optic itself is doing everything the trigger puller used to do, yeah. right? So with all that being said, it's kind of like we're starting to see cars driving themselves, right? Mm -hmm. But what if that fails and all of a sudden the driver has relied so much on the car's technology that we've yeah. moved away from actually having good drivers? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I used to have, and I still miss this car, I really, really wish I never sold it, a 1979 Porsche 911 SC Targa. I nice. love that car. Yeah. And it was straight up, no computers. Mm -hmm. You were only as good a driver, yeah. right, as your skills would allow you to be. Mm -hmm. Because you were still changing gears. Yeah. There was no computer, you know, automating what lane you were yeah. in. There well, was no traction control. Well, it's crazy because you feel so attached. Like, yeah. this is a piece of not only engineering, but yeah. like, it's you feel attached to the car. Like, Dude, you're shifting it, gears. That, yeah. Like, the acceleration, it's That yeah, vehicle it's awesome. felt like an extension of my arm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, and it felt great, as does me shooting 300 yards with this gun. Yeah. It just feels so natural and it feels mm -hmm. good. The moment you start adding the technology to it, is it nice? Mm -hmm. Is it fun? Sure. Yeah. But I feel like we're getting spoiled, mm -hmm. right? And on top of that too, I also feel like now, because we're starting to look at what we are calling our near peer. Yeah, adversaries. <laughs> right, that are out there. It looks like they've been advancing their technology steadily throughout history or mm -hmm. throughout the last, let's say 20 years. Yeah. While we have been fighting in a couple of conflicts, yeah. as they're called. Non-conducive environments. Yeah, where we look at the modern US enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's been guys with the AKs, and they've been kind of keeping us at bay for the last 20 years. Yeah. Now we're now we're starting to look at enemies that are actually far, far technolo technologically superior mm -hmm. to what we have been fighting, and now it seems to us like we're playing trying to play catch up. Yeah. Well, we're right? doing huge jumps and leaps and bounds, yeah. which is not bad, but it you know if you look at history, yeah. when you try to do large leaps and jumps, there's things that's in between those gaps that yeah. get left behind. Right. And and, and then we find that out. Yeah. Say, in the, right yeah. when we need it yeah, to work. Not when yeah. We, yeah, yeah so time. yeah, so all of this happening is, I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it's awesome. I definitely think it's needed. Yeah. But at the same time, I hope that we're still going to have a basically trained soldier, marine, whatever. Yeah. That is still going to be very efficient with a basic rifle. Yeah. And not get so heavily reliant on all this technology to take care of them in a oh crap situation. Yeah. Because. It seems like the modern sol or the the, the next gen soldier yeah. is going to be issued, you know, fifty rounds and a thousand batteries. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like we're going to run out of batteries before we run out of ammunition mm -hmm. on some of this stuff. So, you know, there's a whole lot happening there, and I wonder too what type of fail safes all these types of optic and technology have. Yeah, as and well. I would say that's my thing that I'm kind of curious on, right? So like this guy, like I know I can do short of just about oh, anything yeah. to it yeah. except maybe run it over with a tank. Other than that, like it's pretty much going to work. It probably um, still work. Yeah, it, it honestly might still work. I yeah, know. so it is a proven optic. I will say that, you know, anything that we can try to do to increase the lethality on the battlefield, yeah. let's do it. But let's also too make sure that we're not relying so heavily on it that if it's not there, exactly. we can't perform our yeah. duties. But anyway, so with guys like this, right, so again, there's not a whole lot that's going on in here. Like, this is literally just tritium power. There's yeah. no batteries. There's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. With other, you know, new advanced optics and, you know, military weapon systems that are starting to become a thing, one, anytime you add computers to anything, it becomes a lot heavier. Yeah. Right? And I've always talked about weight since we started doing these military videos. Like, either they want the next generation of soldiers to be jacked out of their mind and <laughs> carry all this weight, or... You know, so you add weight, but one also to, like you said, batteries, right? Yeah. So these are things that you're, you know, not only are TTPs and SOPs changing, but um, how reliable is it? Now, like I said, obviously these things are, you know, ridiculously tested extensively yeah. and stuff like that. But we hope. We hope. <laughs> um, but here's the thing, too, though. I, I don't know if this... Now, like you said, if we could augment the entire force and yeah. we can make everyone like a designated marksman or a sniper, like yes, yeah. that would be fantastic. But monetarily wise, I just don't think so. That's that feasible. was that was my next thing too. The cost of all yeah, this. I don't think it's feasible. I, I think these yeah. will be for specialty units. Yeah, like and yeah, and of course. But the thing is though, that's not from what I've been hearing. Like, or as far as my research goes, they're one yeah. to compl completely transform our, our our current armed forces. No, right? yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, I just don't like, foresee okay. that happening. Like I already disagree with taxes 100%. Yeah. So trying to go ahead and do this, you know, yeah. I'm like, cool, do I think we should have a well-funded and a very technological heavy military? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Right? With that being said, I don't like paying taxes. So, yeah. you know, whatever. Well, and it's hard too because like you said, it, even in the Marine Corps today, like we don't shoot iron sights. Like I feel that yeah. like that's a very huge gap in our training. Like I said, mm -hmm. if this optic fails, like I I know for a fact that I would say probably 80% of the people in my platoon do not know how to use iron sights. Yeah. And there's nothing that I can do. And like some people will say like, oh, well, if you see that there's a deficiency, deficiency with your Marines, fix it. Like, how are you going to fix I, it? Yes, I'm saying I can't yeah. fix that. That's not something well, that's we can, within we can, the realm of my control. Yeah, right? we, is the uh, Marine Corps going to allot us uh, a bunch of M855 yeah, and exactly. had to take aim training for yeah, a couple of weekends? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, but one, so there's a huge gap already in the training. Now we're trying to implement another scope when we just also had a reticle change on yeah. this guy also. So yeah. we noticed, now granted it wasn't like vastly different, but it still... It's still different. Yeah, was, you yeah. still have to learn how to use a new reticle. So now you're talking about changing an entire scope completely. Yeah. From the, like you're going to have to not only pay the money for the scope, yeah. but outfit and then retrain everyone. Yeah. Which, like I said, just personally does not sound that feasible to me. Yeah. So, I mean... This isn't the first time that the United States military has undergone technological changes, no. right? So again, I'm not saying I'm against any of this. No. I'm all for it. I just want to make sure that all of these people that are fielding this, that are researching yeah. and developing and all this, I really hope that they got a, a staff, right, that mm -hmm. has been through some of these changes, mm -hmm. right, and realized too, like, hey, this was an issue when we went from 
the M14 to the M16. Yeah. Right? I pointed because that's where the M14 used to be, yeah. but we took it out. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, so the M14 to the M16, right? Mm -hmm. These are some of the changes from the A1 to the A2, yeah. or even all the way up to the A4 platform, right? Mm -hmm. This is what happened when we went from iron sights to ACOG as being a standard issue. Mm -hmm. So all of this, I hope, is just kind of like being real small. But when you think about those changes within the last 50 years, mm -hmm. hasn't been all that great in my mind. Yeah. I mean, just to change the pattern on our uniforms. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now all of a sudden we're talking about, literally I saw a picture of a guy with his, all of the, the heads up display mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I'm like, that one dude's head looks like it costs about a hundred to $150,000. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> that, well, and that's yeah. like, even if you look at the recent conflicts yeah. we've been in, right? So like you take like Iraq, Afghanistan, whatever, in like 2007, like probably like the peak yeah. of the war, like people were just dropping JDAMs like crazy. Like yeah. you could pretty much bomb anything that you wanted, you know what I'm saying? Within reason. <laughs> but like right. flash forward after that, like people, like especially like higher ranking, like officers and stuff like that, like you had to be very particular, like mm -hmm. in what you were trying to strike. One, because the opinion of the war was going down but secondly like it becomes a money thing right yeah, oh yeah. so like and that's why even so like black hawk down for example mm -hmm. right so you know you lose a black hawk a black hawk is like millions of dollars yeah. you know what i'm saying in one piece of equipment so you take that per soldier so like even now like with the sip gear that we're issued and stuff yeah. like i've probably got like close to two hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff on my right. body yeah. not including the money that the marine corps spent to train me so yeah. you do that times like millions of people yeah. like that's a lot of money yeah so. or i mean it, what's kind of funny to think about is what we're issued today yeah just in gear alone yeah out costs one vehicle during world war ii yeah you know what i mean it's crazy it's, it's kind of yeah. funny wow but uh anyway inflation for the win yeah. um so <laughs> all that being said the next generation squad weapon fire control system looks complicated and complications lead to not good experiences on the battlefield yeah right that's a lot to unload there. But if it's supposed to make your life easier, supposed to be more efficient, and you're mm -hmm. supposed to be a better fighter because of the technology, cool. I would like to see it in practice, but yeah. the only, you gotta remember, the end user is the first test product, is yeah. the first tester, yeah. right, in the real world. So mm -hmm. it's kinda like, whoo, that's uh that'll be fun, right? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, it's like I don't I don't wanna sound like a FUD because yeah. like I, right. I'm saying like, oh change is terrible. Like change is great. Yes. Rapid change, eh, not yeah. so much. Let's, but let's I mean I'm I'm integrate. open to the idea of like integrating new systems and putting new stuff in place, yeah. which I think is dope. However, so, yeah. comma. Yeah. I would want to see how it works yeah. and if it actually works and so if it's, it's even feasible to it's, outfit everything. Yeah, it's just like what we've kind of seen with like the integration of LPVOs though, mm -hmm. because you've seen your, you know, your your high high speed guys. Yeah. They've already been fielding that product for about 10 years. Yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. right? And so, I mean, and they've been using it mm -hmm. and they've come back and said, we like this. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, sweet. All right, let's yeah. go ahead and start issuing that to the standard force now, mm -hmm. right? So you're, you're again, your end user are typically yeah. the guys that are the door kickers, that are yeah. the ones doing the secret squirrel stuff that you don't hear about, mm -hmm. right? And so that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's it's filled in that way. So we'll see. Yeah. Yep, so we'll see. But anyway, we'll leave it off there, guys. What we want to hear though is from you down in the comment section below about all of this next generation goodness that seems to be coming from SIG and L3 Harris slash Leupold and Vortex and everybody, all these great brands, yeah. which I think is awesome. But like I said, it's a lot, a lot of changes happening very quickly. Shameless plug here, one change that should happen, Marine Corps tattoo policy. In shameless plug. 100%. I just wanted to sneak that in there. Don't you know that if you have a lot of tattoos, you're not an effective leader? Yeah, yeah makes sense. Obviously. But all right, we'll leave it off there, guys. Last thing I want to talk about, however, is our current giveaway. We've got the modern FAL. Speaking of modern guns, mm -hmm. right? So the FAL is a classic battle rifle that we've got set up to be, well, modern. Yep. So this is actually the DS Arms SA-58. SA-58 is the code word. I remember. Nice. Uh, we've got a uh, M lock rail on it with the BCM grip. Yes, some of you guys looking at it like you got the grip on backwards. And it's like it doesn't matter if it's comfortable. That's what works. And honestly, I prefer mine like it that. It feels yeah. great like that. 
Okay, so whatever. Anyway, Picatinny riding all the way up top, and we've also got the Picatinny dust cover with the Bro optic. And no, I'm not talking about sub bro. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the battle rifle optic. It's a four power prism, which I said like you say you duped that in the video. <laughs> yeah, I said three power in the video. But anyway, it's a it's a, it's a one more than that. It's a yeah. four power prism optic that allows you also to utilize your iron sight still. Super cool. Coming with one twenty round mag, and uh, mm -hmm. I pretty Thanks, much love. Yeah, this thing is sweet. And of course, yeah, we still got the 50 cal behind me here waiting for our winner, Liz. Congratulations to you to get over the paperwork and send that guy out. So, mm, giveaways for days because here at Classic Firearms, that, that's what we love to do. By the way, 20,000 likes on this giveaway video. We'll give away another one of those. Maybe a different color, maybe a different optic, maybe a different barrel length, but it's still gonna be a semi-auto 50 cal from Barrett. So. 20,000 likes on this one. That's what we're waiting for. All right. I'll leave it off there, guys. We'll see you down in the comment section. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.